Well, good morning, everybody. This is Jamie Silver with Herf Jones Yearbooks. Welcome back to the podcast. Today, we're going to talk about three distinct topics. The first one, hard to believe November is around the corner, but I have a, a little checklist of reminders for the month of November to look at together. Then we're going to look at a short presentation on diversity and double-edged theme. Then we're going to switch gears to some basics of photo composition, look at some samples together, and then review a few photo resolution guidelines. So let's get started right away with those November November checklists. So hard to believe, again, it's right around the corner, but these are some things to just consider, a little reminders. You may have already covered a lot of this, but just a reminder. We'll want to submit all our production specifications, including cover, end sheet, um, all those designs. Any questions, let me know. We want to continue looking at coverage of all events, even those sports whose seasons are ending. We want to finish the master design for all sections of the book. Now is a good time to challenge the staff to have more pages done before winter break. Again, maybe look at the previous year and see if we can set some goals as a group to you know, meet or exceed uh, whatever we did last year at this time. Uh, winter break will also be here before we know it. We want to organize, execute, and really kind of finish up the book sales. Hopefully that's going well for you. Unless you're listening and you're, you have a fall delivery, that's a little bit different schedules, you know. But generally speaking, you know, now's a really good time to start wrapping up the yearbook sales and maybe consider a special holiday sale if you've done something like that and if that's helped or something to consider for this year. We'll also want to do round two of your advertising sponsorship drive or any of those business ads that you may have done in the past. Or again, if you haven't, some to consider now. Uh, with this time of year, we also want to look at that first deposit may be coming due soon. Now, if you do online sales, you're probably taken care of with the revenue that's been coming in for you. But if you don't do online sales, you'll just want to be prepared for you know, having a check request made for that first deposit. Also a good time of year to submit your personalized name list for your name stamps or name plates. And again, as always, keep your index and your coverage report going so you have an idea of who's in the book and who isn't in the book that we may need to, as we say here in the, in the, on the form here, a hit list to make sure we get everyone covered who may not be in the book yet other than their portrait. So something to consider about. And then, of course, plan coverage for winter sports. Those will be here as well. Also, if your retake day is over, it might be time to finish and flow your underclass faculty portraits, potentially seniors if you have those. But again, after retake day, you want to start uh, flowing those portraits on the pages. And then, as always, continually update your coverage calendar with events that will be featured in the yearbook. So you've probably had a plan from the start of the school year what we're going to have in the book, but it's always good to revisit, see if there's new clubs or anything like that that we might want to plan coverage on and see if we have space that we can allocate for those groups. Now we're going to switch gears to a quick video, uh, as I mentioned, on, on theme. It's Murdoch. And it's Kayla. And in this video, we're going to be talking about unity and diversity themes. Or double-edged themes like learners today, leaders tomorrow. Unity and diversity themes can be used to celebrate the diversity of your population, but you always want to add in a message of unity. With All in the Mix, this staff provides a powerful visual, showing a different take on a diverse campus. Beginning on the cover, this staff illustrates the premise that it takes all kinds to make it work, and that there are many kinds of success. While the verbal of this book is unity, the visual shows an array of diverse views, creating an impactful vision. Both sides of the dichotomy are included here. It's about unity and diversity. It is exactly like nothing else. The visual component of the theme, Intermix, shows many little different parts make up the unified whole. Something in common. By emphasizing first-person stories with the eye, and all the things the students shared, this theme covered both individuality and being part of the larger community. The way I see it, we all have the same school, but it's different for everyone. That's the gist of this book that celebrates both unity and diversity. A sheet of stickers accompany each book, allowing the buyer to select the images that grace the cover of his or her book. By covering things from every angle, the staff at Kennedy Middle School felt readers could celebrate both the school's diversity and the commonalities that make it strong. Now, let's take a look at some double-edged themes. Both sides of the story matter, and this staff showed it with From Here to There. In one part of the book, 
Order was used in the sense of a sequence and led to chronological coverage, and in the other part, order was used as classifications and was used to cover people and groups. The visual and verbal message of contrast set the stage for a double-edged theme at University High. My place, my time. The two ways the staff will cover the year, by times and by places, are introduced immediately. What you see is not always what you get. The double spread dividers in this volume shows that student life is really about passion, sports about pressure, and academics about commitment. This theme from Robinson Middle was really triple-edged by changing the punctuation after the word seriously from a question mark to a period to an exclamation point. The meaning is changed entirely. And that brings us to the end of our unity, diversity, and double-edged themes. Again, I hope that uh, provided some insight or got some inspiration going for you. See, maybe you see something here that corresponds with one theme that you're working on or something that kind of further develop your theme. So just want to share a couple of videos on the podcast here. The second one, we're going to switch gears now to photography. And these are some of the basic rules of composition. And then I'm going to show you a couple examples as well. photography a lot of those basics you're familiar with if you've taken a class at school for example you'll, you've covered things like rule of thirds um, leading lines and whatnot just want to share a couple examples of mine uh, and I'm gonna hone in on specifically school related I hope but as you as you know me too well I tend to take a lot of photos of my little daughter so there's a lot of pictures of her at the end here but these are from a high school graduation I want to share with you so a few that I took in the last year or two um, I love this one again another thing you saw in the presentation was depth of field when I shoot, I love shooting with narrow depth of field, right? So you'll see the graduates in the foreground are blurred out. There's a few parents in the front row that are, you know, crystal clear and sharp focus. And then as you go up in the bleachers, they, they get blurry or out of focus. And it, it gives the photograph, photograph some real depth. So again, same here, trying to hone in on one subject, one person. Very clear here, lens is wide open, that gives you that very narrow depth of field, gets her in focus, captures that emotion of you know holding her diploma for the first time at the ceremony. A couple more of the same, turning around and making sure to see the audience and their reaction as you saw in the presentation. And again, very depth, very narrow depth of field, so it's very blurry in the background. Trying to capture the moment and, and you know we're doing a we're we're sharing a story with visual images. Um, trying to capture everyone throwing the caps up in the air. These are from a different event, but more of a, a school-related activity. This is from a yearbook camp a couple years ago. Just showing you how you can get different angles, get close, focus on what they're doing to highlight what, what the activity is. It's a fun activity if you haven't done this team-building exercise. If you've been to our workshops, you've done the cookie game. Again, some close-ups. You'll, you'll notice on a lot of my photographs, I tend to do a lot of close-ups. This one was kind of neat to show framing. That was in the presentation as well. It was an outdoor activity and using this framework literally to frame the photo and, and the subject inside. 
looking over people's shoulders to get different perspectives. They were, we were doing a video tutorial on how to shoot video and edit with an iPad, and then showing the editing features of that. Classroom environment again with natural light instead of flash. Back to graduation, love getting people's expressions. Again, throwing the caps and gowns up. So here's where we switch, switch to some of my personal photographs, but I love shooting water. If you have seen this, you know, more related to school, you know, and swimming and all that, but I love high speed, um, you know, high shutter speed so you can capture things that are moving. Just a couple examples of water. This is mist uh, at the zoo, so it looks just some friends of ours and with the mist all around captured uh, with a fast shutter speed. Just gives, gives a really cool look. And I put this one in to consider black and white. You know, these days we have all color yearbooks, but you know, there might be an example where you might want to draw attention to a photograph or a section or part of the book by you know going black and white. So you can consider doing that too. And some photographs just look really cool and, and really bounce off the page when they're in black and white. This was from a band competition. This was the gentleman timing. So this was uh, at Downers Grove South, I believe, and there are schools from all over. I went down with family to see my niece participating, but you'll see, you know, I was trying to capture emotion extreme close-ups when I could. Framing again, not dead center. Rule of thirds again, his face, uh, the instrument maybe, you know, lines up with those two intersecting points. Again, we're trying to tell a story visually with photographs. Different perspectives. One thing I, I, I meant to try here and I didn't, but playing with the shutter speed here, you might be able to get the drumsticks a little blurry to maybe show the, the motion a little bit more. So maybe a little bit slower would have been better here. There's my niece, again, off center. So you get the leading lines of the school buses behind her. Broke my own rule here, put her dead center because the emotion or lack of emotion on her face, um, waiting for things to start, I think was interesting. So I kind of liked it dead center. This was on a school bus, again, leading lines, you know, going down the bus and, and kind of peering through the seats to reveal the subject. This is my daughter, but I'm um, showing just, you know, part of her face and, and looking in the direction that she's looking. I thought it was a, a powerful image. So this time of year as parents, you know, a lot of us are taking pictures of our little kids, especially, you know, doing apple picking and pumpkin picking and all that. But again, trying to tell a story so it's pretty clear, you know, what we're doing, close-ups, action, so anyway, those are just some of my photographs. Last thing I want to share with you guys today is photo resolution. We're measured in DPI. You're probably familiar with that, dots per inch or pixels per inch. You may have seen PPI. This is essentially how everything is printed in your yearbook. So by default, a lot of things online are 70, 72 DPI. So you want to be very cautious about any images that you, you know, take from the internet um, and copyright issues, of course, too, but purely from a technical perspective here, if it's 72 DPI, you know, it's probably not going to print well. And I have an example here. I'll scroll down so you can see. And even text, right? So this is text and a photograph at 70 DPI, 72 DPI, excuse me, and then a 300 DPI. So in general, our rule of thumb is 300 or more. And if, you're, if you have the settings on your camera, you want to make sure you set them for capturing the highest resolution and the least compression because if you have the images to start with at high resolution, we can always cut them down, but we can't really add. Whenever we go into Photoshop and we add pixels, it's kind of faking the photo. And in, in the end, the end result will still be a slightly blurry image, more like the one on the left here, if we've tried to add pixels after the fact. The best way to do it if you're using a camera is to bump up the resolution as much as you can and capture as much as you can. If you're scanning something from a print, same thing there. You want to scan it at a really high resolution and then cut down. So again, our standard is 300. The exception to that rule is if you're going to be cropping photos a lot, you'll want to start out with even more resolution, right? So let's pretend this photo is taken and there's a whole scene here. There might have been other people over here, but then we crop the photo to this one student looking at the book. And essentially what we've done is we've taken that picture and we've blown it up and we've pulled those pixels apart in essence, lowering the effective DPI. So just something to consider. If you have any questions on DPI or anything else we covered in this podcast, please feel free to let me know. I'd love to talk with you soon. You have a great day. Thank you.